let's see now. $11 million up front. $11 million a year for the next 29 years. Hmm. If I pay myself a $1,000 a day allowance, that's $365,000 a year that I would be able to spend on whatever I wanted. And let's see. Um... As of the 21st of October 2019, the Mega Millions jackpot prize reached $1.6 billion, and the Powerball jackpot reached $620 million. Assuming the maximum income tax withholdings and selection of a 30-year payout option, that is at least $26.45 million per year for winning Mega Millions by yourself, and $10.25 million per year for a solo Powerball win. That is a lot of money. Understandably, interest in buying tickets has gone up a lot. You can't win if you don't play, and the odds only improve when you buy more tickets, right? After all, miracles happen. I bought my ticket for each drawing, too. Let's talk about the lottery, though. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. These two lotteries are run by nonprofit organizations. Mega Millions is operated by a consortium of state lottery organizations. Powerball is run by the Multi State Lottery Association, also known as Muscle. These organizations have a cooperative deal with each other to sell tickets. So when you go down to the local gas station to buy a Powerball ticket, you can also buy a Mega Millions ticket at the same time. A ticket for either of the drawings is $2. Not much, really compared to the size of the jackpots. It's really tempting to play. Obviously, that's the point. For a couple of bucks, you can buy a chance to change your life forever. Some would argue that it's not so tempting if one understands what's going on behind the curtain. Naturally, I think that the curtain needs to be pulled back. People who play should understand exactly what is involved before they buy their ticket. Or tickets, since there are many who buy multiple chances at once. The Mega Millions Consortium and Muscle collectively serve 46 jurisdictions, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and 44 states. Alabama, Alaska, Hawaii, Mississippi, Nevada, and Utah do not participate in multi-state lotteries. Alaska does not participate because Juno feels that they do not need lottery income, not with all the natural resources that they have. The state governments in Montgomery and Salt Lake City object on moral grounds. Honolulu thinks that gambling would hurt the primary industry in their state, tourism. And both Carson City and Jackson believe that a lottery would compete with their already lucrative gambling industries, reducing their overall income. That's their choice, of course. Nevada, Alabama, Mississippi, and Utah see some purchasing of tickets across state lines, especially when the jackpots grow enough to become national news. Alaska and Hawaii don't see much of this phenomenon, understandably. There are some operating costs. About 15% of ticket sales go to pay commissions to the ticket sellers and the operating costs for the consortiums and the lotteries. Since people who work in these organizations and their families are barred from playing, the employees are paid well for their work. This hasn't, however, prevented attempts to defraud the lottery. The penalties associated with these frauds are stiff. Eddie Tipton, a former employee of Muscle, was convicted in 2017 of writing code into the drawing system for Hot Lotto to predict winning numbers. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison after pleading guilty. Tommy Tipton, his brother, was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Eddie's longtime friend Robert Rose pled guilty and was sentenced to six months of home confinement in a deal for his testimony against the Tipton brothers. They were all assessed huge fines in addition to paying back every penny of their illegitimate winnings. 
What broke the case wide open was the fact that a consortium from Honduras was attempting to claim a ticket that was purchased just down the road from Muscle's headquarters. The consortium and Muscle use about 50% of sales for prize money payouts. According to lottery officials, 34% of each ticket goes into the jackpot, which starts at $40 million for each of these drawings. The jackpots are funded annuities, which is why the cash value of the jackpots are lower. So, we can do some math using the cash value of $904 million for the Mega Millions drawing to represent sales. $904 million is 34% of ticket sales, so the Mega Millions Consortium has sold around $2.659 billion in tickets for this one drawing. According to the information released by Muscle, approximately 35% of sales are distributed to the 46 lottery commissions, based upon the ticket sales within their states. That's about $930 million in total from that Mega Millions drawing. The states use that money to fund various state functions. Arkansas funds a scholarship program. Colorado funds environmental protection. Montana uses some for police funding. Iowa is more straightforward, allocating the funding that they receive to the state general fund. While it might seem that Iowa is less charitable towards social causes, in point of fact, most states use lottery funds to replace general funds for those causes, so it's mostly a PR facade. The lottery ticket you just bought, you just voluntarily paid 70 cents in taxes. Bought five, $3.50. $20? Congratulations, you just ponied up $14 in voluntary taxes. It might make you feel better that your state allocated those tax dollars to college scholarships or wildlife preserves or cops. But as for me, um, no. Just, no. I understand that my ticket is a voluntary tax. That's a big part of why I buy just one ticket per drawing and only when I can afford it. The odds of winning something may be a little bit better than 1 in 25, but the odds of hitting that jackpot are about 1 in 292 million for Powerball and 1 in 259 million for Mega Millions. In fact, hitting that $1.6 billion jackpot as a solo win, the odds exceed 1 in 300 million. If I bought 50 tickets for each Powerball drawing, my odds of winning improve to about 1 in 5.8 million. If I play exactly the same numbers each time, my odds of winning the jackpot in a year climb all the way up to 1 in 56,192.565. Meaning that if I play this way for every drawing for the next 30 years, my chances will climb all the way up to 1 in 1,873 or so. Winning isn't a solution to every problem, either. There are dozens of stories about winners spending their way right back into the poorhouse. After a win, lottery winners often embark on binge spending, buying things which they do not need just because they can afford them. Winners tend to be overly generous, and unscrupulous people take advantage of that to fund fake charities. Friends and family that winners don't even remember having show up, asking for a little help. A little shared good fortune. A little generosity. Some winners have completely lost their heads. The jackpot effectively destroyed their lives. So, why play then? I mean, you just explained that this is a voluntary tax, and that the tax dollars only seem to go to special programs, and that your odds of winning are low, and the winning could be the worst thing to happen to you. Well, it's fun. I have a pretty good imagination. When I buy a ticket, I like to imagine what I would do with the money. Let's say, for instance, that I win the upcoming Powerball jackpot by myself. After taxes, where I live, I'll have about $11 million per year. First things first, I'd pay off every debt that I have. Totally. I'd buy my home outright and build a dream home into which to move. I'd hire a lawyer, an accountant, and an investment counselor with specific instructions to invest wisely. 10% would go to charitable causes of my choosing, such as creating a scholarship for non-traditional students and financing food pantries. 10% more would go to other charities. I would set up a daily allowance for myself and monthly stipends for my kids 
so that none of us have less than we need to live comfortably, nor immediate access to more than a reasonable amount. The bulk will be invested by the counselor in order to ensure a permanent source of interest income. As far as this channel goes, I buy a building, convert it into a studio, and switch to making content full-time. I'd even consider adding some studio sets in the building, which of course my fellow content creators could use for a reasonable but quite affordable fee. Maybe a kitchen set, a green screen set, a talk show set, a motion capture stage, and some sound booths. That'd be great, right? In short, I've imagined what I would do with at least some of that money, and I play because it sparks my imagination. Think of it as a focused daydream, one which helps me to maintain my mental agility and encourages me to pay attention to investments, charities, and social issues. To me, all of that is a bargain at $2 a ticket. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.